It's Mark Rippon's nephew, nephew yeah. against the uh, artist formerly known as the third overall pick in the 2018 draft. And to discuss that and more, uh, a man who watches a ton of film because he's not only a great, a top-notch talent evaluator in uh, the world of football, he's also an NFL film senior producer and the producer as well as on-air representative of NFL Matchup on ESPN. He's none other than Greg Cosell back here on the show. How are you, Greg? Rich, great to be with you. Thanks. What are you seeing with Darnold? What is going on with him? What's your evaluation? Of Sam. Yeah, I think I think Darnold's at the point right now where he is just struggling to see things, and he's having a hard time executing basic concepts, <laughs> things at this point in his career he should see. Um, I also think he has a tendency to move too much. Uh, when you're in the pocket, and look, we know the game now, a lot of people talk about secondary action, improvisational plays, but those have to be more of a parachute, Rich. You can't just drop back and leave the pocket. You have to let the design and structure of the play play out. And I think he's he's perceiving pressure that's often not there, and he moves too much. Now, I will say this one thing. When I evaluate a quarterback, you have to isolate the traits and attributes of a quarterback as opposed to just saying, well, there's not a lot of talent around him. That's easy to say that there's not a lot of talent around a player, but you have to isolate his traits and, and attributes and characteristics. And I think right now Darnold is a struggling young quarterback. Well, I mean, uh, isolation uh, for him based on everybody else around him. I mean, that's almost like solitary confinement in terms of uh, <laughs> evaluating Greg. I mean, but so so let me ask you this: uh, where 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 was you, where were you on the evaluation of that quarterback group as a whole with him in relation to Mayfield and? and Rosen and Allen and, and then Lamar Jackson for that draft. Where did you stand on Darnold coming in, Greg? Well, the concerns that he's shown in the league were concerns I had coming out. I thought that he did tend to move. He's also a guy that his lower body mechanics, he struggles with that. He doesn't always step to his throws. That may be just the way he throws the ball. Josh Allen's like that as well. The, you know, uh, Josh Allen's a little different, though. The Josh Allen experience this year, you know, it's yes. been uh, it's been kind of fun. Um, but, uh, but, no, Darnold has some issues that need to be cleaned up. And at some point, if they don't get cleaned up, you end up being kind of a maybe yes, maybe no player without consistency. Um, we'll see where he goes in his career. I know that, that Adam Gase has been an easy mark for a lot of people. But at the end of the day, when you watch tape and the tape does not lie, a quarterback must be able to execute basic concepts. And Darnold's struggling with that right now. Well, what about the concepts he's being given, Greg? What about that? You know, every every there's not a thousand concepts. So every, there's there's basic concepts that are on every playbook. Um, we can debate that uh, at given times about given play calls. Those are always debatable. But I think when you see basic concepts that everybody runs that are in every coach's playbook, those have to be executed. And you know, the interception, for instance, he threw in the end zone to Xavier Rhodes last week. Week he just didn't see it at all. Mm. You know, th th he didn't read it. He didn't see it. You know, that's something you have to read and you have to see. Um, so, and, and it's a route concept that's in everybody's playbook. It, it, was, no, it was nothing where you could say, oh, oh my God, what's Adam Gase doing? So, um, Greg, you're an evaluator. When I sit in this chair, I'm an opinionator. Um, so um, I'd like you to evaluate the opinion I came up with the other day that the Jets have officially broken Sam Darnold, whether it is hiring a coach uh, in midstream um, and then that coach coming in and um, with a general manager that gets changed midstream and the current general manager trading away their best defensive player on the eve of the season, then which their uh, maybe second best defensive player in the middle of the defense and C.J. Mosley opts out. Um, they trade away their best defensive player for draft choices, not people who can help Darnold right now. They let Robbie Anderson go that put it all together from management all the way down to everything else that Sam Darnold is officially broken by the Jets. What do you say to that? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know what's in Sam Darnold's head. Um, you know, obviously you'd like to, him to be in a position where there's some continuity, both with a coaching staff. This is the second year for Gase. I guess most people just automatically assume that this will be the last year. I, you know, I find that whole thing interesting. I, don't, I never know where to go with that because they won six of their last eight games last year. Right. And, and no one seemed to give Gase any credit for that because he's got this, this persona uh, that he's, he's the whipping boy for a lot of people, which I don't go into those kinds of things, but they did win six out of their eight last year. Obviously, they're not very good this year. They've got a ton of injuries. They tried to upgrade their O-line. Um, 
you know, we'll see where it goes. Uh, but but right now, Darnold is a struggling quarterback that, to me, some of that's independent of the situation with the coaching staff and, and, and the general manager. Now, that said, just uh, before we move on, uh, Becton looks like the real deal, right? When you see that on yep, I, No doubt, right? Yep, I think, I think so. They nailed that. that. I mean, that guy's just a mountainous human being, and he seems and he moves to, very, very well. And he seems to have the nasty, right? He seems to have the nasty where— Oh, for he, sure. I mean, I remember watching his tape at Louisville. He, he gets after people for sure. Uh, that, he'll be a very good left tackle in the league. Greg Cosell here on the Rich Eisen Show. Now then, uh, I guess technically in your backyard at NFL Films, Philadelphia, PA, what what do you see about Wentz? What ails him? What what I guess the, yeah. what's up with him, essentially? Yeah, he's. I think he's fighting it a little bit right now. He has some very, very good plays. The touchdown he threw to Greg Ward last week was really high-level mentally. Uh, and, and so you see those plays, which we know he's capable of. Um, but at times he's also a little lost mentally with his recognition, uh, what I call elimination and isolation, meaning eliminating what's not there and isolating what is there within the structure and timing of the play. Uh, if you don't do that, you end up playing much too fast physically and it, it it might seem kind of uh, weird to say this, but when you play fast physically, you end up being slow mentally and you're tentative. And then you leave throws on the field that are there. And when you add in the fact that he's his poor, poor ball placement, he's missing some routine throws, you've got a struggling quarterback. And, and all you can do is fight through it. You know, I, I think it's like a baseball player, Rich. You know, when you're in a hot streak, you could face the best pitcher on the opposing team and the ball still looks like a beach ball. When you're in a slump, you could face the worst pitcher and the ball looks like a BB. You know, you just got to fight through that. He's fighting it right now a little bit. I mean, the mechanics, uh, according to Kurt Warner, uh, have yep. been off for quite some time, is what he said for years is what Kurt mentioned last Friday when he came on the show. What are you seeing on film, Greg? I would agree with that, um, and I think that needs to continually be worked on, and I'm certainly not in the building every day, so I don't know what they do, right. but he tends to be an overstrider, and when you overstride, one thing that happens, particularly when you don't have a naturally compact delivery, and he does not have a naturally compact delivery, so when you overstride, you have to rush your upper body to catch up, and he tends to rush his upper body to catch up, and that can lead to the ball sailing and inaccuracy which we do see at times. Where do you stand on the concept of sitting somebody for a week to just give them a breather and see what you got in the other kid like Jalen Hurts? What's your concept on um, that, Greg? Normally, I'm not a believer in that. Um, I think you have to work through that. I, th you know, I think that y y y I think you run into more issues uh, than less issues if you do that, uh, particularly in Philadelphia. <laughs> 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 that you are an expert on as well. You've had a front row seat to that media well, market. I've been for here for 41 years at NFL <laughs> Film, so I've, I've, yes, I have had a front row seat. And my good friend is Ron Jaworski, and I know you know him oh, as well. Of course. So, uh, I know all about that. Hey, wasn't John Facenda a local anchor in Philadelphia yes. that the Sables yes, said, let's get him? I was actually the last person to work with John before he passed away. Come on. Really? Yep. No doubt. What was it like? Yep. What was it like working with John? Oh, he, well, I had worked with him prior to that as well, but, you know, he had gotten sick. This is probably 83 or 84, right. a long time ago. Um, and I, we had to go to his house because he wasn't doing real well, but he could still narrate. And uh, he was the nicest guy in the world. I mean, those days are over where you had the one guy. He was the Walter Cronkite. of. Uh, I know I'm aging myself here, no. Rich, but he was the Walter Cronkite of Philadelphia News. Absolutely. Uh, Greg Cosell here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Okay, so now let's move on to uh what you saw on monday night football my gosh mahomes there's just there's no it doesn't seem like if you confuse him you should just like pat yourself on the back uh it, it's not as if he's not confusable but you can confuse him it's just so rare to do that and everything that andy Reid dials up that if you fall down to the chiefs which is more often than not you better have an offense that can potentially go point for point with them. And it seemed like the Ravens have trouble with this. They have yet to win with Lamar Jackson at quarterback yeah. coming back from a halftime deficit. What do you see about this offense and what's going on with Baltimore based on what we saw? Well, I recently? think they're structured a certain way, Rich. The, the, the reality is the, the offense is structured around Lamar Jackson as a runner. And all the pass game works off of that. They don't really have what we would view as, as a true drop-back pass game in a strict sense. Um, 
So what happens is, and I think Steve Spagnuolo did an unbelievable job. Now, he also knows in his back pocket that his offense is likely to put up 30-plus yes, points every week, right. and I think that that allows you to do some things you might not otherwise do. But he pretty much said on third down and other downs as well, you know what, we're going to play press man, and we're going to blitz. And what that's going to do is it's going to make your receivers have to win one-on-one matchups, and Lamar, you're going to have to make precise ball placement throws within structure. And you know what, if you want to run around, Around, that's okay. Maybe you'll make a big play here and there because you're special, but you know what? You're not going to make enough of them to score 35 points. So that was the approach Steve Spagnuolo took, and it, it worked in that game. So now Baltimore, I'm not saying every team will do that because I'm not a blueprint guy. You have to do what fits your team. Right. You, every team can't do exactly the same thing, but it'll be interesting to see if teams feel that they can at least pressure a little more. So, you know, where do you stand on the subject that the reason why the Ravens offense is set up this way is because Lamar can't do it vertically with his shoulder that there is something up with his skill set that he can't do that I mean we heard that coming out of Louisville now he's 0 right. for 9 in games where he's trailing at halftime it just does seem that it's it's the way to to beat the Ravens I know you're not a blueprint guy but if you get up on him it's difficult for him to come back by just relying on him well, to throw it. I don't I don't I'm not one of those folks. I do believe in his ability to throw. His arm is terrific and I think he wants to be great. So it's not it's not anything between the temples, but I, I'd love for your evaluation, Greg. Well he's super competitive. He's a great kid. I've been around him. Um, he's as competitive as there is. Uh, I think he's an improving thrower, but I've always been a believer in one thing. And then I've watched tape for a long time, Rich, as you know, yes. is that coaches tell you how they feel about their players by how they use them. And this, at this moment, okay, and, and we, we lose track because Lamar had a phenomenal year last year. We lose sight of the fact he's a third-year player. He's a young player. Um, they built an offense a certain way because they feel that that maximizes his strengths and minimizes what they view as, I don't want to say weaknesses, right. but things that he's not quite ready to do on a consistent week-to-week basis. So that's the way they built their offense. This is not me talking. This is what they do. So Greg Roman, Jim Harbaugh, James Urban, their quarterback coach, this is what they do. Now, because the kid's so competitive and wants to be great, yes. he will improve. But this is where they are right now. Greg Cosell, NFL film senior producer, NFL matchup on ESPN analyst. Right here, a couple more minutes left with you, sir. Uh, the topic du jour in uh, New Orleans, or from New Orleans, definitely is nationwide based on the performance on Monday night and the loss in Vegas, and then – uh, where there were tons of bubble screens and air uh, uh, targets in the air only five to seven yards down the field. W- about Drew Brees, the subject matter of his arm strength and his age, where do you stand on this subject, Greg Cosell? I think this has been true of Drew for probably three, four years. I mean, there were a number of plays in that game where they, they actually, by design, were looking to get the ball down the field, and the Packers took it away. And, then, and therefore, he comes down to um, uh, to something shorter. For instance, the Camara 52-yard TD reception came on what was a called shot play. They had what we call a post-cross combination. Uh, the ball was designed to go down the field, and that's where Drew looked. But the Packers took both those routes away with their coverage and therefore he threw it to Kamara in the flat. Uh, Drew does not have a big arm right now. Uh, They've played this way for a number of years. Uh, Look, the way the game is structured now, you are always looking for explosive pass plays. But I don't think Drew is playing any differently than he has in, let's say, over the last year or two. Um, don't forget they gave up a lot of points, uh, and they also scored a lot of points. You know, so Drew was 29 for 36, and they scored 30 points offensively. Uh, I think in most cases you would probably take that, and would and and if they if their defense had played better, and by the way their defense is really struggling. If they had won the game 30 to 24 because their defense had played better, would we be having this conversation? Probably not. <laughs> no, not at all. Winning is the ultimate deodorant. As a matter yeah, of fact, so we had I mean, Cameron. I think you have to be. I think the tape tells you. Right. And I think he has, and I think he's playing kind of the way he's played for the last year, two years. 
Now, I mean, you know, we had Ke- Michael Thomas, who catches a lot of short balls Absolutely. and is very good run after catch. We had Cameron Jordan on the other day. I said, how do you fix what's going on with the penalties and everything? He said, win. That's what he said. He said, winning. And obviously, that's the ultimate deodorant. And that's, I guess, the way I want to finish up this segment with you, Greg Cosell. Uh, this has been a quarterback-driven segment so far. The best defense you've seen on film through three weeks where, again, no preseason. We've seen a ton of points. Points are up in a significant way. But the best defense that you've seen so far in the All-22 while you've been doing your film work is, is which defense? Well, and they have not played great teams, so people are going to say that. But, I, you know, to me, I look at just how they play and what they do, and I'd say that's the Steelers. I think the Steelers are really good at all three levels of their defense. Um, you know, we've always talked about someone like Bill Belichick, They're stylistically, that he's about front multiplicity and coverage consistency because they play so much man. The Steelers, to me, are the reverse. Their, their fronts are very consistent. They basically rush four when they get to their nickel and dime, but their coverage is they do so much in the secondary with disguise, late movement. They really muddy the looks for the quarterback. So to me, the Steelers are a really, really good defense. Now, obviously, they don't play this week. It would have been a very interesting game against Tennessee, but um, uh, the Steelers' defense, to me, they're a fun watch. And then which which defense of a, of a, of a, of a team that has Super Bowl aspirations is concerned? you the most that you've Seattle. seen? Seattle. Huh. Why? You, you, yeah, you just spit that one right out. What is it? Yeah, because I, I, you know, hey, I picked Russell Wilson to be the league MVP in August, and I think, uh, you know, so far so good. We've only played three weeks, but, you know, hey, you got to pat yourself on the back, Rich, when you can, right? So, nice. um I think their defense has significant concerns on the back end. Uh, they've lost Jamal Adams probably for a week or so with it, with a, a muscle injury. Um, but their defense is struggling on the back end, and, and they just give up too many explosive plays, and that's the killer in this league. So would you say the most complete team could be Green Bay with the way that Aaron Rodgers is playing and the way that the Green Bay defense appears to be showing up? Um, what do you think about that in terms the of – The most complete team in the league? Yes, sir. I would probably have to say right now that would be Kansas City with the way Spags is, is putting yeah. together that defense, and we know that they can score. So I probably have to look there, but Green Bay is playing very well. Um, I, I love what they're doing offensively with Matt LaFleur. There's a lot more play action, play action boot, misdirection, things that cause problems for defenses uh, tactically and schematically, and Rodgers is throwing the ball beautifully. So, yeah, they're, they're a really good team. Greg, um, and you're uh, a great uh, analyst. Love the segments, as always, when you come on. Um, we'll be checking you out on NFL Matchup on ESPN this coming up uh, weekend, and let's uh, let's keep uh, conversing. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, Rich. Thanks so much. You got it. That's Greg Cosell, NFL film senior producer. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.